Yeah, maybe we're alive. Maybe. I've had like five false starts so far, so. Yeah, this is my first yeah, time doing a stream. Oh no, I'm doing the classic. Okay, here we go. Alright, now we're good. Okay, cool. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Um, uh, Andrew Singh from 3D Central here, and I, I keep watching all these live streams, and they look like so much fun, but they're super intimidating because there's a ton of back-end 3D printing knowledge going on, and there's like a ton of um, live streaming knowledge, too, so I'm kind of just diving in right from the beginning, and I'm, yeah, I'm just giving it a shot. So I've got my Canon DSLR hooked up like a webcam over here, and that's this guy. And then I've got my um, MacBook webcam here. And I don't know if anybody's watching right now, but if they are, I think there's like a chat room. And yeah, I think this is also my like fifth time using Twitch too. So I am uh, I'm not super hey Mello's here. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so I have this, and this is what I kind of want to work on today. And this is a type 2 phaser. And Chris printed that printed this out of the shop. And I, this is my mini factory model, and I can't remember the name of the original artist. So I'm gonna have to look this up. It looks like um I think Ron Goldberg. Um, designed a bunch of models like this. I'll have to look it up. If anybody knows who made this, um, let me know in the comments because that would be awesome to give them a shout out right now. And I should totally know that already. But uh, Chris printed this out and like, we've been kicking around and working on doing something really cool, which is designing a rumble pack, which is basically a bunch of fan motors with blades missing that we're putting inside. So when you push a button, it actually vibrates. Like one of those old N64 controllers. And that's going to be the coolest thing ever. Um, but we're kind of playing around with finishing techniques. So this we sanded down and painted and all that. But what looks really cool is we actually used Plasti Dip for the handle. So the handle has this like kind of rubber finish. So it actually feels textured and it has a couple layers on it. So it feels like a bicycle handlebar. Like it feels like a grip which is pretty rad. So I've got some reference photos and I have no idea how to pull that on OBS. So I'm probably gonna have to make a second screen for that. Okay, I'll figure that out later. But yeah, so I'm gonna be painting, I'm just gonna try and paint this black and this black and then I'll kind of goof around a little bit. And yeah, that's gonna be my first live stream, so I'm just going to be painting and watching the chat, <laughs> and I'll give it a shot. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to get right into it. So I'm going to sand it down a little bit first, because I haven't done that quite yet. But I think this whole front, front end needs to be black. So we'll just give that like a light sand in. Which is the extremely exciting part. No, I haven't, Mello. That's that's like that's been on the list for a while, and uh, actually, um, uh, Cindy, my girlfriend, who's at the only the only other person here who's in here, Rego Three D, she's the one who actually designed that frog, and she helped me build that mold. It was just a ton of fun. But we actually had a few people in the shop the other day who were talking about doing some work and designing some silicone molds. And they were talking about using Smooth On and EcoFlex, and it kind of got me thinking again about using that material. So it's definitely on my radar. And that's going to be. Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to use it again soon. It's so expensive. I forget the three D printing. That's like the big thing about three um, D printing material is like to print something like this. It's like mostly hollow, so something like this is only a couple dollars in plastic. Um, but when you're printing with EcoFlex or Smooth On, you're printing with rubber, like to print something that weighs, you know, like a pound, or I guess not to print, but to pour something that weighs like a pound, it's like you're holding like 40 or $50 of just raw material plus time and everything, but it's just so much. It's so expensive. It's crazy. Um, especially after getting like, in my head, I can do like really quick calculations of how much plastic is worth. So when you throw on that, like that rubber modifier, it's nuts. 
It's really crazy. All right. All right, so this feels kind of tacky, so I'm probably ready to start painting this. So I have no idea how to add music to a live stream, too. I know you can put your own in, but I'm not really sure how to do it. And I know if I throw on, like, a Katy Perry song or something, I know Twitch is going to yell at me. I'll do that anyways. Alright. Cool. So I think that's just about ready to try painting. So we're gonna give that a shot. Uh and I'm gonna use this. How's the sound by the way? Is it a... Uh... Am I like super loud or super quiet or like just like screaming at the top of my lungs right now. Oh, I bet the mic on the camera's on, huh? Huh, okay, that's a really good point. Let's see if I can fix that. Uh, how about that? Can you hear one mic or two mics now? Awesome, cool. All right, I'm figuring this thing out. Anything else like super weird? Like, can you <laughs> is the video like double speed or anything? No? All right, cool. All right, so let's look at a picture of this thing real fast. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna paint the whole front black. I think this is the, this is the one from Voyager and like Next Generation. And in hindsight, the Plasti Dip worked so well for this grip. I probably should have done this too while I was at it. It would have it would have looked the same. Now it's gonna look. This is gonna be really shiny. This is gonna be really dull. So on the next one that we do, I'll probably just do Plasti Dip for both. So that looks really cool. And the Plasti Dip just feels great. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. Yeah, I think there's a better way to do this. I've also got like, the way the camera's set up right now is probably not the best. So the camera actually uses like one of those micro, uh, uses like a micro USB cable. It uses the one from like 2000, 2011. Like not the Android charger, but like the weird stepped one. And uh, I actually had to go pull it off one of our like really old 3D printers. I had to find it. I had to pull it off of an up from, from 2011, and uh, we just didn't have any other. I tore my house apart looking for the cable to plug this in. All right, this is starting to come together. I feel like we'll get to a pretty good place pretty fast with this. Yeah, I should definitely have used the Plasti Dip for this. Cool. Yeah, starting to come together though. Starting to look like an actual phaser. 
or a actual prop phaser. <laughs> so speaking of Star Trek, I, uh, Cindy and I were working on this DOS computer. She found a computer from 1997 or 1998, and we were working on restoring it. it runs Windows 98, and it had a copy of this game called Starfleet Academy, and uh, it's like an old Star Trek simulator like you play as a captain who's trying to get commission of his own ship man it is the worst game it's so hard to play it took me four hours to beat the first mission i failed it i failed it every possible way you can fail the mission i blew up my ship i blew up the enemy's ship which you're not supposed to blow up but you have to disable it i blew up starfleet by ramming into it on the way back i blew up a bunch of mines that i wasn't supposed to blow up i didn't blow up the mines i was supposed to blow up I communicated with an em enemy vessel that I wasn't supposed to communicate with, and uh, the whole time Shatner did all the voice acting for it, and he just sounded so disappointed. Airbrushing, yeah, that's been on my that's been on my list for a minute. Um, I keep meaning to get an airbrush. That is that's on my list. That's probably by by the end of the month. I think that's going to be something that I'm going to be picking up. Uh, just because it seems so handy, and I keep seeing people using them, and I'm, it's, it's like back in 2015 when everybody had a hoverboard, and I was just watching everybody go down the street quickly and effortlessly, and I was thinking, that looks awesome, except now I see everybody going down the street in hoverboards, and it's like, oh, I don't know. Well, airbrushing, it's been around for a hot second. All right, mindless segue aside, this is looking pretty good. Well, you have an airbrush, don't you? Or I just, I guess maybe I just assume that you did airbrushing because you've done so much so much work. I just assume that anybody who does any kind of mold work automatically picks up airbrush skills. Like the two are just connected in my brain. To me, the minute you start making molds, you have airbrush skills, you pick up machine shop skills, you just become like Superman basically. Oh, you do, of course. <laughs> oh, and you fight crime, too. You're, like, just jack-of-all-trades, master of the same. All right, that looks pretty good. I feel like if I keep going, I'm just going to wind up brushing all the way down. Okay, so let's take a look here. I'll do a slow rotation. So it looks like we've got it about at the point where it looks pretty good. It's still super glossy. It should dry a little bit more matte, but it looks pretty good to me. So what else is black on this thing? Let's get that done. Okay, so this, this recessed piece right here is black. So I'm going to want to get that too. So let's get that up. So I'm going to pull this out so I have it. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get OBS, figure out a way to get Twitch. Yeah, I guess you're probably, if I was using this on my desktop, I would have two monitors. But right now I've got my desktops on the other side of the room and I'm on my laptop, so I've only got one little monitor and then I've got a bunch of tiny little windows open. So, all right, how should I do this? I could tape it off and be careful, or I could just say I'm going to be careful. I'm going to tape it off and be careful. I'm going to go boring and tedious.
All right, so I'm thinking the buttons aren't black, so I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on those and then exacto over it. So for these, I'm just gonna push down on that. First casualty. And then got my handy dandy exacto kit. I can pop open, grab an exacto knife out of. And I'm just going to cut around the edge of one of these. And we'll do the same for the other one. Yeah, it's coming together. Slowly getting there. I think in 2018, 2019, even the next two or three years, I might have something that's just about finished. Now, what I'm really excited about is having what I'm really excited about is having this rumble pack. And Chris has been working on this for a while. And basically the idea is you've got some fans. Because we have so many fans. If, if anybody here, if anybody, I think we got a couple more people watching now. If anybody has a rep wrap or if they've got um, one of the older printer bots that's got like the direct drive, you've got a fan that basically mounts straight down. So you have to feed the filament in like this. And... If you push the filament into the fan, it just pops a blade off and then it goes and it just gets really loud. And the reason it's so loud is because it's a little bit off kilter. So it's sort of throwing its mass around. And that's bad because it's not cooling very efficiently, it's rattling, it's making the prints look wacky. But it's good because it rumbles and we realized if we started putting that in some of these props, you could actually trigger it with an eyeball battery and you could make this rumble pack like you'd find on the Super Nintendo. Or not Super Nintendo, N64. That'd be a crazy Super Nintendo with a rumble pack. Like, what game would even use a rumble pack? I guess all of them if you wanted it. Well, now I gotta build a rumble pack for a Super Nintendo. This is how projects start. So that's the basic idea behind it, is that we're gonna have this rumble pack that we're going to start building into things. And I'm really, really excited for it. But in the meantime, building this is sort of a practice run for just getting the look and feel for this thing. Because we want to build one of these, but we want it to look real nice. So I want to get this rubber down. Yeah, perfect. To remove bubbles out of silicone. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, because it would be the same idea, because you sort of like be shaking it. You could put it on like a tray that like wiggles. That would work great, too. Like a paint mixer. Yeah, exactly. Man, that would be awesome. All right. So I got the buttons taped off, but I'm just going to like play it careful on the sides. Can you see that? Yeah. Move that around so everybody can see it. That's the hardest part about doing things like this. I've got tons of respect for all of the live streamers who I've seen who actually build things like this and make it look really easy because this is, it's tough to build everything upside down.
Yeah, I got the buttons masked off, but I was going to mask off the sides here. I feel like that's going to take a while, so instead I'm just pushing it into the corner and then just pull it up and down. Oh, so the phaser is made by James... James Speckator. That was actually just sent over by Chris. So this was designed by James Speckator. So you can find it on my mini factory. Thanks for sending the link over, Chris. That was going to drive me nuts if I couldn't figure out who made this. My mini factory has some really, really nice um, Star Trek props, which are tough to come by because there's not a lot of consistency. Like, you see a lot of things that are just, like, different from shot to shot. So there's a lot of artistic license involved when it comes to making copies of them. Yeah, I don't think Paramount's too worried about canon. <laughs> Although they probably should be if they're... Is, is it Paramount or CBS? CBS is the one making the new Star Trek, right? Or CBS Paramount? Do I have that right? Did CBS buy Paramount? CBS bought Paramount. All right. Actually, the way this dried, this front end actually looks really flat. So it's not too far off from the Plasti Dip. It has a really dull texture to it. Not super far removed. It's not UPN. I like UPN. UPN had a um, Voyager, right? All right, that looks about right. So I'm thinking once this this is all finished, I'm probably gonna go back and then dirty up the edges. And let's take a look at that picture again. Okay, and these are white. Yeah, there's nothing easier than painting black stuff and white stuff right next to each other. Hmm. 
Okay. So it looks like that's actually, looks like this one is red, and then these two are white. So that's easy enough. So I'm just going to go with a straight red. Because you're probably picking up, I'm not too great at mixing colors. And I'm not too finicky at painting. So I'm not very, <laughs> this is still something that I'm like, I'm, I definitely consider myself somebody who's learning about the process. Oh, this is looking great. Yeah, I was just on eBay a couple days ago. I was looking for something. I just wanted to find something like Voyager related. Because, as you might have guessed, because I keep saying it, Voyager is definitely my favorite of the uh, Star Trek um, series. And uh, I saw that there was a st uh, Star Trek, um, one of the phasers, the Type 2 phasers, just like this one. That sold for four thousand dollars and it was used I think in the first episode um, which is like just a shocking amount of money for a prop especially now with like access to um, with like 3d printers and like being able to create stuff like that to get a screen used one um, that's just a ton of money it's really interesting to think about the idea that especially after watching all those episodes of Tested where Adam Savage was obsessing over the Blade Runner, that was when I built a copy and threw it up on YouTube like later that day. I was just amazed that you could spend so much time and eventually money, in the case of the collector who bought it, uh, so much time and money chasing after something. But everybody's got a white whale. I guess I'm a big Mad Max fan, so I would probably chase down the Interceptor. And I'm sure, if given the chance, I'd probably pay an embarrassing amount of money for it. All right. Vampire Hunter kit. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be awesome. I'm thinking crossbow, like a handheld crossbow, or like um, the uh, the gun from Taxi Driver. Like if you could make one of like a crossbow that would like shoot out from your arm, that would shoot like wooden stakes. That would be awesome for a vampire hunter kit. Um, that that's really that's all I got. <laughs> but I think that would be super. That'd be a pretty pretty boss way to start. I'm not sure any vampires would really be able to go, go past that. I think that would stop most of them. All right, cool. So now we've got one button down. What's weird is in all the pictures, these buttons on the bottom like are the same color. Like they're, they're just not they're not any different, which I feel like is a little strange. But okay.
And let's do these buttons in white. Oh, hey, Chris is here. Cool. Oh, with a link to the thing. Awesome. Yeah, I'll make sure to link that up later, too. I would be, like, shocked if nobody wanted to print this. You know, I keep not sanding these things before I paint them, and then I'm surprised that the paint isn't sticking. Oh, man! <laughs> Garlic press. Oh, it's awesome. A tiny little garlic press. That's genius. Awesome. Alright, so I way overshot it on these. I'm going to go back and add some black to that and bring it in a little bit. Bandolier made of garlic braids. Yeah, there you go. I'm just downright amazed at how much paint you can get on your hands working on something. I'm trying to think of the messiest thing that I ever worked on. I tried to make a furnace to melt aluminum once, and in the process of making the plaster, it was like such a nightmare. The plaster dust got everywhere, and, <laughs> and it was just so hard to contain. That was probably one of the, the, the bigger messes that I made. That was pretty messy. Hmm. This white is looking just really brushed on. Yeah, it's really starting to come together. That front, um, the black looks perfect in the front. It looks like really done well. Um, but the white just looks, it looks real rough. This, ti this titanium white looks real bad. Uh, and I'm at that point where you've got that, you've got that moment where you're thinking, well, maybe some phasers in the Federation had green buttons on them instead of white ones. I'm thinking this might be one of those <laughs> phasers that had green buttons instead of white ones. But I think I'll just keep going, I'll add another layer, and maybe give it a second to dry, and then add another layer, and then probably just weather it down, or just really weather it down, just feed it to a pulp. I'm just so grateful I haven't gotten any uh, paint on this handle yet. The really smooth silver part in the back that I'm sure probably spent four hours sanding on. Probably shouldn't have said that out loud. Oh, there you go. Perfect, yeah. They're just really worn down buttons. This guy uses phaser all the time. This is a terrible federation. This guy was no Picard. He did no talking. This guy was pure Kirk all the way. 
He didn't go around. No diplomacy. Never tried to talk to the aliens. There was no no attempts at diplomacy. It was shoot first, shoot later. Really no time for questions. You saw the alien. He was coming right at me. Ugh, the Dayans. The worst. Well, I'll give that a second to dry. And there's not really any other black on the model. He's reaching for his gun. <laughs> Coming together. I'm so excited. This one's gonna look awesome. I really just can't wait for it to have the rumble pack. It's gonna be a broken record. I just can't wait till I hold something that feels like like you ever been to um has anybody ever been to like a laser tag place? Like where they give you the lasers that you pull the trigger and the whole thing goes or you get hit in the chest, you know, like it zaps. It would just be really rad to have something like that at your house. These white buttons look super bad. I'm uh... a. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a talk about these later. These white buttons are gonna have to see me after class. Got. Or maybe not. Hmm. I was thinking I could heat this up with a heat gun to make it dry faster, but then it might crackle. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just getting lazy. I'll just give it a second. It takes 30 seconds to dry and I'm trying to speed it up. No patience. No patience. Yeah, I grew up in the Bay Area, like right outside San Francisco, and there was a chain of laser tag places called Qzar. If anybody's watching, they grew up near San Francisco and they know what Qzar is. I think there's... I think it was a franchise. There might have been some in like Tampa. And there was one in Tampa, Florida. I never went to that one. But Qzar was just like a big laser tag place. And it was one of those things where like if somebody from Paramount had ever been there, they would have been sued. But it was basically Star Trek the experience. And uh, you would just play, you would play laser tag. And it was, uh, the vests were awesome. Because when you got shot, it felt like you were getting kicked in the chest. And uh, it was, uh, the guns were really cool. They had like, you could, zap somebody from across the room and uh the guns have little um i guess they just probably used a motor with like a a, a weight on the end like your cell phone if you ever looked at a cell phone motor it's just like a it has like a little motor and then it's got a little oblong weight like if you ever built a printer that eccentric nut is what it's called it's just like a little like offset nut it just looks like that probably has something like that in it but still we're, we're going the diy route we're trying to replicate this uh Already made thing with like a homemade DIY solution. Common practice for 3D printing people. Find something that already exists and uh, make it on the cheap and do it yourself. That's why I like 3D printing people so much.
Oh, yeah, and share it, too. Yeah, that's the other part. Documentation. Yeah, that's the toughest part is the documentation. you got to spend hours of your day making sure that everything you do is thoroughly documented. I spent just tons of time um, trying to photograph and write down all the stuff that I've built or worked on. It's really important. You want to make sure you leave as you know wide and thick a paper trail as possible. Otherwise, the stuff that you built, how are, you know, it's difficult for other people to sort of pick up the ball and keep moving, so to speak. Assuming you were doing something worth continuing. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really important to do that. Oh, Mel, speaking of which, I keep, I keep meaning to tell you, have you ever seen your Judge Dredd helmet? I don't think I've ever actually seen, I don't, I don't think I've shown you this, the helmet that you actually designed, I've got printed out, it like, hangs in a place of honor. That's like one of my prized possessions. If you hadn't shared that, I know, right? Like, if you, uh, if you hadn't, uh, yeah, if you hadn't shared that, I wouldn't be able to print that out. And uh, it w and I wound up making a bunch of other stuff for it. I made the belt and a bunch of other um, pieces. But oh man, that thing was cool. All right, I, I'm ready to call this just about finished on this side. A little bit wore off in the base. So while I'm showing you that, I'm touching up the back. But that looks pretty good to me. So these buttons look good. So now we're just going to put the green in here. And that's the last color part. Yeah, it's coming together. Cool, I like this. This is kind of a... It's not like a horrifying super neon green, but it's like, it's a good green. It's like a status green. And then it looks like it's just in this whole channel here. So this whole bit here is just all green. So I'm just going to kind of push that in, just going to push some paint in. This is kind of like painting sandpaper because it's just really gritty. But it's kind of working. And then just level off the top. Yeah, that looks right. Cool. All right, so now we're starting to make kind of our final lap here putting some of the last coats on. Yeah, Rick and Morty Green, that, you know, it's, 
man, I'm so glad you said that out loud, or I guess you wrote it down, but I'm so glad you said that. That's exactly what I was thinking in my head when I was looking at this green, was Rick and Morty green, because this is the same color. I, I don't know what the, the, um, like the Pantone or like the actual hue is, but this green, not only is it the exact color of Rick and, like it's, all, it's just all over the show, but it's also the same color green that Fusion 360 uses in their renders. Um, and so whenever I see it, like whenever I render anything in Fusion and I make it a green color, it's this like super dark green that I immediately think of Rick and Morty. And it's, it's, it's just like a hyper-saturated, really dark um, green. And it just immediately makes me think of Rick and Morty. It's all over that show. No, you're totally right. Yeah, you're... I'm right there with you. Yeah, and it's tough because it like really it really kind of broke me out of the um I used to associate like white uh white, red and green was sort of like I always associated that with like early DOS games with like really limited color palettes, and now I can't see white, red and green without seeing every gun from Rick and Morty. Like I just like this is from uh, Chex Quest. Like, this is from an old DOS game. That came free with cereal. Like, you would buy a, a box of cereal, and then you would get a video game. It was like a copy of Doom. And, uh, this was like the thing, this was like the weapon in the game. It was like a taser. You'd push this button in with, like, zap people. And then this was like the ammo for it. You would reload it, and you would slap, like, a new one in. You would put it in part way, and then you click it shut. But, like, it was this exact color palette, and uh, now when I look at it, it looks exactly like something you find at a Rick and Morty. Checks, man. Cereal companies did weird stuff to sell cereal back in the mid-90s. So I'm putting a little bit of water on the front because I got a little bit of a mark on this. I'm going to try and clean it. I might not be able to. Probably not going to be able to. Almost certainly won't be able to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it definitely uh, it picked up a little bit of everything. Which is good. That's kind of what you want something like that to do. All right, I'm feeling like this is just about, the paint on this is uh, done. So we have, this is the grip and it's plastic dip, so it's got that like rubber, grab, grab, grab. Here you've got your buttons, you've got your little thing that tells you, I, I don't know if that tells you, I don't know if green means like good to go, this guy's gonna be turned into like a pile of ash, or green means don't worry, we're gonna not destroy this guy, this is just gonna stun him. And then you got your two white buttons, which I'm guessing are probably toggle up and down, and the red button, which is probably fire, I would guess. And then you got these two buttons on the bottom, which in all the pictures that I've seen, don't actually, they, they're not painted, they just look like that. And that's it. This is, uh, all the paint on this is done. So now I'm going to just go around and just add a little bit of texture to it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of black paint kind of around the edges, and then I've got a little bit of silver highlighting. I'm going to try and make it look a little bit more metallic. So this is the part where I'm probably just going to ruin it. This is really what's going to happen, but we'll see what happens. If I left it here, it would probably look pretty rad. But you don't really see, like, weathered stuff in Star Trek, which makes me immediately kind of pause and think about what I'm doing. We're going to give it a shot. Because I already leaked some paint on it, so. Well, there's actually, you get to see the Voyager. You get to see the, um, the Voyager. In Voyager, you get to see the ship pre-weathered. There's a couple of episodes where you get to see it really beat down, called The Year of Hell. Really, really good episodes.
Wait. So I'm going to see what this looks like on one side. I'm just mixing. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Equinox. Yeah, they were pretty trigger happy, too. Opportunistic is what I call them. They, uh, they saw a chance and they took it. Equinox, for all the uh, non-Star Trek folks watching, they were the guys who... Uh, they ran out of fuel in their ship, so they found a race of beings that their bodies were basically 90% fuel, and they put two and two together, and long story short, their ship suddenly became a little bit faster, and uh, they got caught, and things suddenly got a little bit awkward. Yeah, trigger happy, that's what I'd call them. All right, so we're going to try and dust this up a bit around the edges. So let's see how it looks. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'm going too severe. Maybe I want to do something kind of rusty first. Perfect. There we go. Now we're cooking. So we'll just keep dusting that into the corner and cleaning it up and giving it this kind of dirty look and that is just gonna help it look a little more three-dimensional it'll become a little bit clearer as we keep going should make a big difference it might look a little weird actually except just just because there's so few there's so few Star Trek props that are actually like worn down. But that's really what I want this to look like. Because in Star Trek everything's really clean, you just don't have, you just don't really see people or things that aren't taken care of. Everybody's got Everybody has a way to fix everything. Everything's always generally, oh, that looks awesome. All right, so this might have, I might have to take some pictures of my DSLR later, because I don't have an easy way to refocus the big camera here. But adding that sort of rust on the top coat of silver here just made this thing really just like burst into life. So I'm just putting like way too much on and then taking 
way too much off. The good news is all those striations, all those like 3D, th those like excessively 3D printed marks are now kind of filling up with this rust. So it very much looks like it just got worn down. This is looking cool. I was definitely a little bit worried, but it's, uh, it's actually looking all right. It would make sense the grip would be really dirty. Yeah. yeah, this looks awesome. Let's see if we can get a close up here. Gotten a couple paint fingerprints on it too, which are like medium easy to remove. Probably sand them off. I feel like we're rounding the bend here. Oh, that's where I'm getting all this white paint from. There's a big clump of it here. Cool. Let's put that over there. I'm tracking white paint everywhere and I keep getting big clumps of it on everything. I think that'll take care of it. Let's do that. So 
So I'm putting on a bunch like this, and then once we've got just a bunch of sort of that rust color on there, then we're wiping it all off. Kind of as best as I can while leaving it in all of the nooks and crannies. And it sort of naturally congregates there anyways. Which makes sense, that's where stuff is hard to clean. Probably dirtier like down here, right, if you're holding it. Dirty is like right here, probably where your thumb is. So probably make that like the dirtiest spot. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to add a little high, might add like a little bit to the white buttons too, the sides. All right, I'm uh, I'm pretty cool with this. I think I might add I've got a giant bag that I like never go in of all the silver highlights. So, stuff like these and Sometimes what can look really cool is taking something like this and then just putting a tiny bit of it. So I'll pinch up close on the webcam here. So on the edge of this black bit here, See if that's in focus. Just putting a little bit of a line like that, just to kind of give it like the appearance of a corner. So I might go through and just add some silvering on some of the edges. That actually does not look good there. I immediately regret that decision, and I intend to cover it up with black paint and pretend like it never happens. Like Bob Ross. I'm gonna put a happy little bush here. 
There we go. There's a happy little bush. And that silvering right there just never happened. Hmm. Yeah, it looks okay on some of the silver parts, but it really does not, it doesn't have the same effect as it does on some of the other colored plastics. I'm just not really sure how to make silver look more silver. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Maybe adding black, I guess. Yeah, looks like that's the one. There's a really big line here where the two pieces were joined, but looks really ugly. I just keep trying to like add as much stuff to that as I can to really make it look like something like I think out broken half. All right. I'm pretty happy with this actually, like at this point. And uh I seriously doubt that anybody's ever made a battle-damaged Star Trek phaser before. <laughs> you don't really see a whole lot of, of weathered Star Trek stuff. Like I said, it's just everything in Star Trek always looks super shiny and super new. So, um, cool. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six uh, brushes used, like a bunch of paints. Uh, I got my hands super dirty. Two webcams running. Um, probably like, I don't know what hour or something into this live stream. This was super fun. Thank you everybody for watching. This was, uh, this was a really great experience for me. And uh, yeah, thanks. This was really fun. Um, I definitely want to get more into doing these live streams. And yeah, I'm going to get back on Twitter and let me know what you want to see me build. Let me know what you want to see me work on. Um, and yeah, I definitely, we do a ton of stuff in the shop that's sort of like this where I'll build something in like an hour and I've built thousands of things like this that I just build and then they're like, they're gone and like, we'll build something for somebody and we'll send it to them. Uh, and then we just never see it again. And uh, I'd love to start being able to just make a quick video where I just talk about it. <laughs> so anyways, that's it for me. Uh, have a good night. And uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching and have fun printing and all that stuff. Mellow, take it easy, man. I'll talk to you later. Um, Cindy, Chris, later guys.